The search is on to find the man now known as Jihadi John, responsible for the beheading of hostages in ISIS videos. The U.S. government believes he's a Briton and is refusing to comment any further on the matter as investigations continue. A families of victims of Jihadi John's beheadings say that while they're eager to have him caught, they want the operation to bring him in alive. I call on my friends, family and loved ones to rise up against my real killers. He has been identified as Mohammed Amwazi, but he is now known by his alias, Jihadi John. He is the masked face, making threats in most of ISIS videos. ...to this evil alliance of America against the Islamic State to back off and leave our people alone. Before taking on this new identity, Amwazi was a member of a secret Osama bin Laden sleeper cell in London, called the London Boys, which had planned to carry out atrocities against the West. He had also been involved with a violent street gang that targeted wealthy residents with stun guns. He had been arrested once while trying to force his way past security onto a passenger flight from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania to Johannesburg in South Africa in 2009 without a passport. Before his identity was revealed, he had known authorities were on his trail. In emails sent before he left Britain to join the Islamic State in Syria, Mwazi described himself as the dead man walking. Often he complained that his every move is being shadowed by intelligence officers. The reports from the Washington Post, who co-wrote the story revealing Mwazi's identity, said people had a right to know his name. Um, the name um, was clear to U.S. intelligence agencies and British authorities by September um, uh, 2014. So only weeks after they had the name. It's widely known in the intelligence communities. So I was assembling uh, bits and pieces along the way. Um, and then we also relied on what we knew from the video and what we knew from hostages who had been with John and what they knew about John himself. And um, we assembled those pieces and eventually came up with a first name. And then we learned a uh, last name. And uh, it came to a head these, these last couple of weeks. And we sent uh, Suwad, who was, wrote the story with me, to, to London. And she started knocking on doors. And we found um, his close friends um, who talked to us. While US authorities have decided not to speak further on the status of investigation, British Prime well, Minister all, David Cameron says that Britain will do everything it can to track down cases. those who have committed uh, crimes against points. British citizens. First of all, uh, when there are people anywhere in the world who commit appalling and heinous crimes against British citizens, we will do everything we can with the police, with the security services, with all that we have at our disposal to find these people and put them out of action. That is the number one priority for me. We know of the British aid worker, David Hines, who was murdered by Jihadi John, says she doesn't want him killed during the operation to hunt him. To this evil the 26-year-old Mohammed Mwazi had used his ISIS video to taunt US President Barack Obama and British Prime Minister David Cameron right in front of terrified hostages wearing orange jumpsuits. Born in Ukraine, he had come to Britain at age six, attended the University of Win attended the University of Westminster with a degree in computer programming before com with a degree in computer programming before coming on the radar of British intelligence service, the M15. <laughs> There's a new twist to the crisis in Ukraine. The murder of a prominent opposition politician has raised suspicions in Russia about President Vladimir Putin's role in the ongoing conflict. Boris Nemtsov was shot four times in the back of his head on the streets of Moscow on Friday. While President Putin says he will get to the bottom of this to identify and arrest the killer, Ukraine, it seems, is already there claiming Nemtsov was murdered because he planned to disclose evidence of Russia's involvement in the conflict in eastern Ukraine. President Petro Poroshenko's accusations came as he paid tribute to Boris Nemtsov, saying the fierce Putin critic 
had told him a few weeks ago that he had proof of Russia's role in the Ukraine crisis and would reveal it. Boris declared that he would reveal persuasive evidence about the involvement of Russia's armed forces in Ukraine. Someone was very afraid of this. Boris was not afraid. The hangman and executioners were afraid. They killed him. His accusation is buttressed by political analyst Konstantin Egert, who says that the murder of the opposition leader is indicative of the atmosphere in Moscow, where criticizing the government was similar to being a criminal. Uh, although we don't know who committed the murder, but if you're talking about the atmosphere, the context in which it happened, I could say that Ukraine came to Moscow or Donbass came to Moscow. Um, the violence that we witness daily on our TV screens, uh, the violence that's very frequently glorified by uh, state propaganda, this violence could not but finally uh, take root in Russia. I suppose that the authorities should take a pause for thought whether what they were doing uh, with regard to brainwashing the Russian population uh, is too dangerous for themselves because it's not for the first time in, because it's not infrequent or it's not uh, uh, unheard of in Russian history that authorities thought they had everything under control and then they lost everything in a matter of a few seconds. I think in the short term the Russian opposition will be probably spurred into action by the murder of Boris Nemtsov. In the long term, uh, I think it will have to struggle and to just actually keep existing for some time before the Russian society actually feels the need for alternative opinions. For now, there is very little of it, and um, we see it. A former deputy prime minister who had feared Putin wanted him dead, Metsov was the most prominent opposition figure killed in Putin's 15-year rule. At one time, he had been widely seen as the main man most likely to succeed Yeltsin as president. His gangland-style murder was reminiscent of the chaotic 1990s after the communist Soviet Union collapsed and raised further questions about the opposition's ability to mount any challenge to Putin in such a dangerous environment. The Kremlin deflected accusations that it was to blame and Putin put the investigation under presidential control, denouncing what he called a provocation before an opposition protest that had been planned on Sunday. Meanwhile, Nemtsov's murder has resonated with Ukrainians who have been laying flowers and lighting candles outside the Russian embassy in the capital, Kiev, in tribute to the slain politician. Russia's interior ministry says an investigation had began into Nemtsov's murder. <laughs> And that's Diplomatic Channel this week. Tell us what you make of the former ambassador's comments by writing on our page on facebook.com slash Diplomatic Channel or via Twitter at Diplomatic Chan or at Amarachi underscore Ubani. I am Amarachi Ubani. Thanks for watching.